Hello, and welcome to the Cook Laboratory brand certification video. In this video, we'll go over the proper PPE to wear when completing your brand certification, how to lay out and create your part, as well as the machines and tools that you'll have access to once you complete your brand certification. The proper PPE for the brand certification includes ensuring that you are wearing safety glasses, your shop pass, closed toed shoes, and no loose or baggy clothing or dangling jewelry that can become trapped in the machines. Welcome to the layout room. In the cabinet behind me, you will find all of the tools that you need to lay out your part. One of the first things you'll need is layout die and layout die remover. Make sure you also have a rag to use with both of these. Later on in the certification, you may need to use both a caliper and a telescoping bore gauge. Those can be found in the first drawer here. You will also need a scale to take raw measurements of your piece of stock. Those can be found on the back shelf here. Next, we will show you a close-up of how to use each one of these tools. To verify the diameter of a drill bit, you can use either a micrometer, seen here, or a dial caliper, seen here. For the purposes of this certification, a dial caliper should be accurate enough. To use a dial caliper, First, make sure that the dial is zeroed. To do so, loosen the adjustment screw and bring the zero mark to the indicator. Then tighten down the adjustment screw. When measuring your drill bit, make sure to measure both the shank and the flutes of the bit because sometimes a resharpened bit will cut a smaller hole than the shank size. To verify the diameter at the bottom of a hole, a device known as a telescoping bore gauge can be used. The example we'll be using here is a hole saw with a smaller diameter hole in the bottom. A telescoping bore gauge has an adjustment screw at the back. Loosen this screw and push the arms in the front in as far as they will go. Then tighten the adjustment screw. Once this has been completed, lower the bore gauge down until you've reached the bore you wish to measure. Open the screw, allow the arms to click out to measure the bore, and tighten it again. Then remove the gauge. You can now measure this distance with either a dial caliper, like so, or a micrometer, depending on the precision needed. To verify the dimensions of a piece of raw stock, such as this here, you can use what's known as a scale. You may also know it as a ruler. When laying out your part, Make sure that it is square on at least one side so that you can take accurate measurements from that side. Laying out your part, such as this one here, can be done with layout die, a scribe, and a height gauge, seen here. The height gauge reads much like a dial caliper. The first thing you'll want to do is make sure that it is zeroed with your surface plate. Loosen the adjustment screw as you would on a caliper and move the indicator to the zero position. You can now adjust the gauge to the particular height that you would like and use the sharpened edge here to scribe across your part and make the lines seen here. 
For the green certification, you will need to use taps, dies, center punches, and potentially a center trip. These can be found in the cabinets that you gained access to during your shot pass certification. Taps and dies are located in the bottom of the first cabinet. Center punches and center drills are located in the bottom of this cabinet and on the mill and lake cabinets. This is also the cabinet that contains all of the devices and clamps used for clamping a piece to the drill press. When preparing to drill your part, after you have ensured that your drill bit is the right size, make sure that the chuck on the drill is tightened with the chuck key. Make sure that the drill press is turned on and that your part is clamped securely to the table so that your drill bit will not wander and so that your part will not become loose. In case of shattering a drill bit or a part, make sure that the shield is in the way between you and your part. Then turn on the drill press. In one pass, push the drill bit all the way through your part. Make sure to get any chips and clean your area afterwards. And always ensure that when drilling, your part is over the hole in the center of the press. In the green certification process, you will also be expected to use a bandsaw to cut your part to dimension. In order to receive an accurate dimension from the bandsaw, either by angle or by size, you can use the saw guide, which is incremented in degrees to either direction. After setting the desired angle, simply push the saw guide through until the part is completely cut. Here we have the contents of a tap and die set, a center drill, and a set of center punches. A uh, tap and die set is used to thread parts for being machined. A die is used to thread the outside of a part, and a tap is used to thread the inside of a hole. To use a tap, simply loosen the chuck, insert the tap, and tighten the chuck down. Then line it up with the hole that you would like to thread, and thread it. A center punch or a center drill can be used to ensure that the drill bit being used will not wander or go out of dimension on the part being made. A center punch is used simply by lining up the end of the punch on the intersection of two layout lines where a drill will go, tapping it lightly with a hammer, and then drilling over the punch. Finally, a sander can be used to take off rough burrs and edges or to bring something into final dimension after it has been sawn. To use the drill and tap chart in the green room, first decide what tap you will need to use. For this demonstration, we will be using a 3 8 16. 3 8 is the major diameter of the threads. 16 is the TPI, or threads per inch. Once you have decided on your tap, move to the left to find what size drill bit you will need to use to create the hole for this tap. In this case, you will need a 5 16 drill bit. Notice that some of the drill sizes are alphabetical letters. These correspond to the drill bit you will need, and the letters can be found on the drill bit turnstile in the green room. When tapping a drilled hole, after ensuring you have the right size tap for the hole, make sure you have it at a 90 degree angle, and twist two turns down, and one turn back out in order to evacuate the chips that you've made. If at any point you feel 
too much resistance, take the tap the whole way out of the hole, and then clean it for chips and re-enter the tap. Failure to do this may cause you to break the tap or your part.